Here's a problem with a couple parts to it. The first part of the problem asks us to find what the mass is of one cubic meter of water, and we're given its density. So we'll want to use the relationship between density and mass, which states that the density of a substance is equal to its mass divided by its volume. We're looking for that mass, so we can rewrite this as m, the mass, equals the density times that volume. This is just pretty basic algebra here. We want to solve for mass, so we multiply both sides of the equation by v, and then the ones here cancel out. So we have the volume of the water, one cubic meter, and we're also given its density, but we can't just plug these values into this equation yet because the units don't line up. The density we have uses centimeters, while the volume we have uses meters, and the density uses grams, while we're explicitly told to answer in kilograms. So the very first thing we actually want to do is convert the density we have into kilograms per meter cubed. We can do this using what is called a chain link conversion. If we have a measurement of one gram per cubic centimeter, we can convert the grams to kilograms by using the fact that there is one kilogram for every 1,000 grams. We will write this relationship as a fraction, specifically putting the one with the grams in the denominator so that it'll cancel out these grams and replace it with the kilograms. So I'm going to write this as one kilogram over 1,000 grams. So when we put this into our calculator and multiply it, the grams will cancel out and put kilograms in the numerator, which is what we want. We'll do a similar thing with the centimeters. There's 100 centimeters for every one meter. So I'll put the centimeters in the numerator so that it cancels out with the centimeters in the denominator. And then I will cube this entire relationship because we're looking at a cubed unit rather than a linear one. So if we put this into our calculator, then we find that the water has a density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Now this is what we can put into the formula we have for the mass. We'll use our newfound density of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter and multiply it by the given volume of one cubic meter. These cubic meters will cancel out and we're left with an answer in kilograms of 1,000 kilograms. And that is the volume. That is how much the water will be able to fit in. And so that's our answer for part A. For part B, we're looking for something called a mass flow rate, which is described to us as a passage of mass per unit of time. So we need to take the mass of the water we're given and divide it by the amount of time it takes to drain. Once again, though, we have a situation where our units aren't consistent with each other. We're told that we're draining 5,700 cubic meters, but we're not told the mass. So we'll have to find the mass using the same method we used in part A. We'll take the density of the water we found, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, and multiply it by the volume of the water that we have, 5,700 cubic meters. If we do that, we find that the mass of the water we're looking at is 5.70 times 10 to the power of 6 kilograms. Let's also look at the amount of time we're given. We're given 10 hours, but the problem asks us to find the rate in kilograms per second. So we'll want to convert those 10 hours into however many seconds. Once again, we can use a unit conversion, a chain link conversion for this. There are 3,600 seconds in an hour. You can find that pretty easily by either looking it up or doing the math from multiplying 60 seconds for 60 minutes into, that, into an hour. So it's 3,600 seconds per hour. Put the hour in the denominator so they cancel out. And we find that 10 hours is equal to about 3.6 times 10 to the power of 4 seconds. Now all our units are consistent and will get us the answer we want. So let's put this into our equation. 5.70 times 10 to the power of 6 kilograms divided by 3.6 times 10 to the power of 4 seconds. And if we put all this into our calculator, we find a mass flow rate of about 158 kilograms per second. So that is the mass flow rate that we're asked to find in part B. And that's everything we need to know that the problem is asking us for. So that's all for this video. That's all for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me make more videos like this. 
And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try to help out as best as I can. But that's all for now, and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.